the river, we don't touch it. There is no mining, mm -hmm. sand gravel mining in the river. That's mm -hmm. prohibited. But on the floodplain, all the land here, I mean, people can buy this thing. You see, they're farming this one right here. But three years from now, I mean, uh, the farmer may want to sell this. There may be offers from those gravel companies and whatnot. And, and what they do, you saw this, the big area, open area, right? Mm -hmm. They come in, excavate maybe three, five meters. They're going to sort all the material, separate the sand from the fine gravel to the coarse gravel. And they get certain standards there, three quarter inch, a quarter inch, half inch, three eighth of an inch, you know, size for the gravel. Mm -hmm. They sort this, pile this up, and then they can use this for for construction material, for concrete, for cement, for, uh, you know, for uh, uh, material that they put on the roads there underneath, you know. So this is the material they sell for construction um, uh, purposes. After this is done, then um, you can see you can pump the water back in there or just get a culvert that goes to the main river and the water during the floods is going to fill the water into those big ponds and you'll see some of them they already have water in them and then they're used for the wildlife eh? so then for the migratory birds the ducks the geese the pelicans the you know cranes will come here the brand new ones they show with gravel and they are not very attractive but you know it may take five ten years then you may see cattails you may see vegetation on the bank and repairing vegetation the, the fish may start growing in there there are people going there for canoeing they may go there with their kids, go fishing Sunday afternoon, on the weekends, or, you know, and then uh, the birds can come in and out, so then, and during the floods, then this additional storage, so then we get the flood, then all of a sudden you can store additional water on the banks of your river, and as for flood control, so you, you hit multi-purposes with that, but the river itself is intact, and we crossed the river, you saw it once, you have vegetation, repairing vegetation on both sides, and this is untouched. There's rivers right here behind this thing. Uh, we don't have access to this land here. Uh, I'd rather not get in trouble. But we'll cross the bridge here. You're going to see this. I'll slow down on the bridge so you can look at this. Huh? As you can see, the river is left intact. And then we're going to go to another place along the river. Just show you along the Poudre River then how they, how they do things. You'll see there are some areas, still farming areas. Some areas, the land has been sold and they start uh, mining the gravel and so forth. Eh? So that's the idea. In Malaysia, I remember working there in the Muda River and then, you know, they allow mining in the river per se. So what it does, then they extract the sand, but all the silt and clay is just left out in suspension down the river. So the water is very turbid, very bad water for the fish. Not only that, then you extract a, about, uh, on the Muda, about 100 times as much uh, sand and gravel as coming in from upstream. So then the bed starts going down. So the bed goes down, the pier, bridge piers get exposed. <coughs> the piles are maybe three meters exposed there. So the bridge may collapse just about any time. So bridge stability, the embankment, the abutments are sometimes breaking out there. Now your water level dropped down. So you want to get irrigation on your land. So what do you have to do? You build pumping stations. You have to pay electricity to pump the water back into your, your irrigation canal, so additional cost for you. And the third thing that's real bad, some places like the Muda River, the bed of the river is below sea level. So when you get a big flood, there's no problem. When the flood is gone, you get low discharge coming in, then you get salt water coming up the river out there. So now you need to build a delta barrage, you need to build a, 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 um, a, a you know, salinity, um, uh, Estuary barrage to prevent salt water intrusion from coming into the land and pumping the salt water in your farmlands. You see, so the all link problems there. And I remember we had people from Malaysia, uh, Matt Fouad Envy uh, was here, and I showed him how we do things here. You know? And that to man right now, I don't know. I, 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 did, I talked to him about this, showed him a couple pictures, but. Uh, he did not come here yet. If he comes here, I will show it to him. So how we do things and hopefully things can be managed a bit better, you know, maybe helpful to, to your country down the road. You work for DID and so um, that's what I want to show. We'll see other sites out there, huh? but same idea. You'll see different level of progression of the whole system from farmland to people coming in, companies coming in, starting to excavate, like this one, that's a giant hole right now. 
they leave the material they don't need on site and the good stuff they'll excavate and sell out and then you'll see then later on when the water starts to come in kind of a gravel box out there you'll see others where the vegetation has grown out of this you may see others with the birds coming in and using it typically it's in winter that we see tons of bir birds here right now they're in Canada and they migrate here I would say November December they winter here and then they go migrate back north so, there's some uh, you know, people start getting, they want to go to the river right now, like the Kilang River Valley, like the, uh, the upper part of the, of the smart tunnel, the, you know, uh, with yeah. the gum back and the, uh, the, the dam. Yeah, they, they have a trash dam out there and whatnot, but you see some pictures, there are people who want, at low flow want to see the river, they want to see that. Once the people are connected with the river, mm -hmm. They will say, gosh, it's so dirty here, how come? They'll put pressure on the government and say, you need to clean this thing. They'll put pressure on their neighbors. Why do you trash this thing? I want to walk here, I want to go fishing, I want to see the turtles, I want to, you know. Once this happens, then the mentality will change. I remember Canada where I grew up, then people on the highway in the 60s, you open the window and throw everything out the window. Things got so dirty and everything, people say, well, you know, it's all trashy around here. We need to do something about this. Then there was a sign put on the highway, if you litter the highway, it's going to cost you 200 bucks, okay? I don't think they ever caught anyone, but just to see a sign like this, that hey, I may have to pay hundreds of dollars for this thing, I don't want to be caught, so then people start to clean this up. And then it looks a lot better today, and in the US was the same thing. So I think mentality will change when the people are getting you know, connected to the rivers, benefits from getting close to the rivers. Uh, right now, I think the mentality of the people is that uh, the flood will clean up my, my trash, get rid of my, that's the way it was maybe, you know, centuries ago, you know, when you have all organic waste, but now we have all plastic and we have, you know, all kinds of metals and I don't know what that gets in, in, in chemicals that get into the, the waste in the water. You don't want this in the river, so. It's not bio degradable. Because yeah. the next are here, like they're building all the trail, bike trail along, so people could buy and see the river. Well, this is new too. This may be 10 that or 15 one is years. Good. We should do that because once we buy <laughs> and see all the rubbish in the river, it's, it's very hot out there. Yeah. Yes, but exactly. It's difficult. The mentality yeah. you got to change. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but you still yeah, have you some have very nice mountain the areas and. and you know, reservoirs and rivers are pristine in the in the mountain, the jungle out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just some areas. I was telling that to Matt also and, and that to Ong there, you know, I said, why don't you start with one side? You don't have to do the whole country all at once, okay? But if you could take one case study, one site, okay, one river, and you say, we're going to try this. There's no gravel mining in the river. We'll put this on the floodplain and we'll see what happens. And then adjust accordingly. So, oh, this problem came up. How do we deal with that? Okay, you meet and all of a sudden we'll do it this way. And then finally you may find something. If it works well, then others will want to say, hey, we want to do the same thing here. And you build some bike trails and you see the way it's being done right now. We have our country here and there are lots of things we don't like. And we like some things to be better. Okay, we look at this, what can we do, you know? The farmers want the water for irrigation. 90% of the water goes for irrigation here about 10-15% for the cities and very little for the river and for the fish. We'd like to have more for the fish and for people like to go kayaking and all that stuff. Well, can we manage to maybe, you know, have, make everybody happy with this? They want to build a new dam now and, and it's big uh, opposition to this dam right now. But, you know, it could be a solution to some of those problems and so forth. So, Every country is like that. You see problems, you see this from what you've seen, but what you see here is a different model. Uh, so there may be some ideas here, maybe good for you to take back home and say, well, what if, why not? Things change, the times change, things have changed here. Uh, the bike trail and that, that stuff was not there in the 70s. Like me, it's all occupied by the, by the squatters. Yeah. Well, that's a different problem, but you know, it doesn't mean you, you cannot find a solution to this thing here, too, okay? Unless they can the squatters away from the... Yeah, but that, the squatters is not the main source of the problem in Malaysia. The gravel mining in Malaysia, sand mining, in the river, is not because of the squatters. 
It's because the government allowed them to get permits to mine in the, in the, in the river. So if you allow yeah, them... This baby four years old or something. I remember when the mad squad came here, and that's what, three years ago, something like that. So I was explaining here, you see, on one side there, when we have the road, on the left hand side, we have all the old stuff, the forest, and you can see the ponds there, barely see through the vegetation. The right hand side, brand new pond, okay? You see the mining activities going on in the, on the other side of the interstate there, all the stockpiles of sand and gravel, they pile this up, they will have concrete uh, trucks there, they kind of, you know, ready mix type of thing, then take sand, gravel, and uh, cement and then powder and then add water and then you have your concrete and mix this and get to the construction site others are just to put this with payloaders and those trucks uh, for a gravel certain size for construction material huh? so that's what the, is going on right now five ten years ago they were on this side so they were excavating here there's material they don't like they leave it here and there it's not regulated so but some of it is forming islands and, you know, some uh, lagunas and whatnot. And in winter, this is full of birds, migratory birds coming here. And see vegetation start to grow. You can see the, the reeds and the cattails and, uh, you know, the, all, all kinds of species that, uh, you know, are on the repairing vegetation. And even there on the other side, you saw... On the left hand side is kind of island something just close. Huh? You go there and you get a boat, you rent the facility for a wedding and then you can have a um, paddle boat to go to the main island. You have all the installation for a party and whatnot, the food and people can go for a swim, they can go canoeing, they can go, you know, little paddle boat and just go around and have a great time in the summer in this private. area. Is that a private property? Yeah, it's private property. It was closed today. so. See some people are very creative with ideas to make money and whatnot. There's some boat stores. Uh, I don't see uh, taking this pass on the other side. It used to be one of those ponds there, and the motor boat, you know, company they just install something. They test the boats on the lake. They don't want to sell boats, so the boat is here. Put this in the water. You turn, you like it, you buy the boat, and we'll put load this up for you. Yeah. That's right, that's farther up near Lovnun, and they sold years ago and it was something else and you know, it could come and go. But that's the idea, huh? So, now you can see the river, the river is passing, is on the background there, huh? You can see, uh, you see all the vegetation line out there, tall vegetation, that's a river right there. It winds out its way all the way to Windsor where we were. So now I want to go to the Environmental Learning Center. I want to go see those birds, the raptor birds, and then uh, there's a little walking trail, so I want to show you closer to Fort Collins what's going on. Is this our excavated farmland? Oh yeah, absolutely. This was farmland before. That, you see, we are right on the bluff here, city Fort Collins, and that is the valley for the Poudre River. It goes all the way to, you see the bluff line on the other side? Yeah, maybe in front of this thing here, but it's probably two kilometers wide. This is the valley of the Poudre River. Okay. And it goes to the Platte River, the South Platte River, and that goes all the way to Nebraska and all the way to the, the Mississippi River. Huh? Uh, actually, Missouri first, and then the Mississippi River, and then so. But um, here, this was all farmland, and um, you know, gravel area. People, those companies, they came here and bought this, bought the land, and excavated. And that's what's left over. Now they connected this to the main river, so you get water here. So. For flood, during floods, you gain some detention storage. You have tremendous volume here of that of excavated material that's been used for construction. Eh? Construction material, the roads, buildings, everything in town, you know, benefited from this thing. Uh, so flood control, and now it turns into kind of environmental uh, ponds and areas. Eh? And I'll show you as we go closer to Fort Collins. Of course, over the years, we started close to Fort Collins. And now they go farther downstream and now they are near Windsor. So that's why I show you where the companies are right now. We saw two of them and we're going up the river to see how, what the older systems look like. Yeah? So nice and rounded, you know. So I imagine this was probably a bit too fine. You see, they piled this up here and the shrubs uh, growing it young and then so that pile maybe I don't know five, six years old or something. They just left it there. Eventually, 
right now there's no regulation with the environment you see so eventually there may be something the environment say hey why don't you put this in the middle and that would be an island or something like that right now this is totally disconnected okay so of sand and gravel the right mix out there you will just add the cement and steer this whole thing add water and that's it Cobble, exactly, cobbled stones, and they sell this for, you know, just, uh, uh, what do you call this, for landscaping. But they say they sell that in bags, very expensive. In bags, yeah, the stones yeah, in bags. Yeah. 